Hello everyone, I am Theo from Irisketch. In this video, I would like to show you how to create an irrigation plan within 15 minutes using Irisketch. I will go into the most important and most frequently used functions of Irisketch without going into too much detail. Functions such as the Design Studio or the IRI Seller Calculation Tool leave you out. If you want to delve deeper into the functions of Irisketch, just watch the training videos on this channel. And now, enjoy the video. Let's start by creating a new project at the workplace. By clicking on the cogwheel symbol, you have the option of pre-selecting manufacturers. I open the project. Irisketch is divided into four sections, the landscape, irrigation, layouts, and the spec sheet. We start in the drawing. The selection bar at the top right contains functions such as load, save, project configurations, or forward and back. I zoom in and out by turning the mouse wheel. If I hold down the mouse wheel, I can move the drawing page. To start drawing, I select Polygon in the left-hand selection window, then the Lawn and Draw Lawn surface on the sheet. I finish the drawing by clicking on OK. By clicking again, I select the drawing and now have the option of making adjustments. If I click on the square dots, I can move the corners. Double click on the corners to delete them. Clicking on a page creates a new corner point. If I click on the round dots, I can bend the sides. The three symbols at the top right allow the surface to be rotated, scaled, or both at the same time. Other surfaces are concrete, flower beds, or shrubs. It is also possible to add underlayer images. Any image file or PDF can be used. Important, after the import, a dimension must be entered to scale the image. You can also import an image directly from Google Maps. I can freely determine my image here on the basis of an address. Scaling is not recommended in this case. The image can now be cropped here at the bottom left using Crop Tool. I will now add the lawn and shrubs areas to my background image. and switch to irrigation. Up here, I first choose a spray body. Then the corresponding nozzle. Here is the MP rotator from Hunter. I select the auto draw. The first click positions the nozzle. Then I drag the throwing distance and click to set the throwing angle. The program automatically selects the appropriate nozzle from the range. I can now move on to the next nozzle and cover the entire lawn.
I release the function with the escape key and can now select a nozzle by clicking on it and adjust the angle and throw. If I use the circle at the corner, the angle and throw distance are changed simultaneously over the entire nozzle range. By pressing the Enter key on my keyboard or double-clicking with my mouse, I reactivate the last function, in my case, placing the nozzles. By switching to the layout and selecting precipitation under visual style, I can display the precipitation values of the system and thus quickly identify over or under irrigation and adjust accordingly. Let us now turn to the drip irrigation. I have the option of choosing my favorite drip pipe via drip line. And to be laid freely in the beds. If I select the drip pipe and click on Add Outlet at the bottom here, I can extend the drip pipe. A quicker way is to press the Tab key on my keyboard. A double click deletes the drip presection. Alternatively, I can also use the drip cover function. In doing so, I outline the bed area. And before I enclose the border, I can now set the distance between the pipes and the installation angle. I now add a drip start and connect it to the drip pipe. Now the water source and a valve box. I now set the amount of water available for the water source. 2,400 litres per hour. Now, I have to think about how to distribute the sprinklers and drip pipes over the available water volume. To do this, I hold down the control key on my keyboard and drag a window over my system and first select the rotary nozzles consumer. The system marks all MP rotators and shows me 23 selected objects and a total consumption of 10,018 litres per hour. If I divide the 10,000 litres per hour by my available water volume of 2,400 litres per hour, I know that I have to create five irrigation zones. First, I connect the water source to the valve box and select the main line. Then the lateral line to the consumers.
If I select the pipe, I can add consumers or branches here at the bottom left. I can do it faster by using the tab key on my keyboard. In the bottom line, IrisCatch shows me the total consumption of this line, 1,054 litres. That means I can add more sprinklers. Three thousand liters per hour. That is too much. I remove this sprinkler. I only ever add as many sprinklers to a sprinkler line as the amount of water I have available. Now I connect the remaining sprinklers to the zones. I then connect the drip pipe. A click on the drip pipe also shows the water consumption. A control unit and a rain sensor must not be missing. And the irrigation is ready. To check, I quickly jump to my spec sheet. All the products listed in the plan are displayed here, as well as any errors. A sprinkler that is not connected is displayed at the top here in the red line. A click on the eye symbol lets me jump back to irrigation and the sprinkler that is not connected is immediately highlighted. In layout mode, I can now design my plan according to my wishes. First, I choose a paper format. I switch to drawing mode and can now adapt my drawing to the sheet. I zoom in and out by turning the mouse wheel. If I hold down the mouse wheel, I can move the drawing. Back to layout mode. Various tables can be added. And visual styles can be selected. I can display any information about the components under Consumers, Info and Pipe Info. Up here I can save the plan as a PDF. All components used in the plan are displayed under Specs Sheet. Green lines are clearly specified by the plan. Yellow lines can only be set more precisely by me.
And that's it for my quick how-to video for Erisketch. Do you have any further questions about the program? Just talk to me. See you soon.